Hage Gottfried Kenkop, the moment that we've been waiting for.
Commander of the United States, the Emperor of the Commander, Your Excellency.
A special day, a day where we memorize and just let our thoughts go and know that we are here because of people. Stand strong and be courageous. That is my message and word for each and every one today. Joshua 1 verse 6, stand strong and courageous. That is what we need to do. And when we think of Samuel Mahareru, he stands strong and with courage. Honorable Solomon Mentos, April, to welcome us to this mighty space. Thank you. Governor April. Neil, that the freedom and independence of this country did not come on a silver platter. This region is very ideal and appropriate to host the Heroes Day because courage, gallantry, and bravery is synonymous to heart up. I want to quote in order to emphasize that statement. Audangansep Hendrik Vipoy in the presence of armed German forces, once write and said, let us die fighting. The struggle of the Herero and Nama are against German. A famous quote from the early resistance against German occupation. And therefore, I'm puzzled. How could we disassociate thus associate ourselves as Namibians from praising and admiring and appreciating the heroes and the heroines of Namibia if judged by the quotation above cited even the soil on which the celebrations and commemorations are happening are a testimony of exceptional bravery. The soil, therefore, is acclaiming the heroes and heroines and some of the contemporary inhabitants of this brave land. And that is very disappointing that people that were born yesterday are trying to negate the sacrifices made by our forefathers and foremothers. That to me is a serious betrayal. On this day, at this hour, Your Excellency, I am seized with mixed emotions. I'm happy for what Namibia has become. I'm glad that we are free and independent. Yet I'm sad and I'm vexed because I know for some this gathering is a waste of taxpayers' money. I'm grateful in that space and captivated that the money, whatever the amount is that the taxpayers may be moaning about and for, cannot pay the blood that was spilled for our independence and freedom. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, Your Excellency the President, to be heroic is to be courageous enough to die for something. It is that quality that we are commemorating today, an exceptional quality of self-abnegation and determination. Today, this very day, 26th of August, even though some lampooners wants to delete it from the history of Namibia, Heru's Day 
is engraved with blood and not with ink by those who died and suffered in the annals of the history of this nation. And just let us bear in mind, true heroes and true heroines are undramatic. They don't call important events that gives them identity and the sense of belonging. They don't call such important events as rubbish and nonsense. Those heroes and heroines, the true ones, are not driven by the urge to surpass others at whatever cost. They are driven by the urge to serve the people at whatever cost. Freedom matters, true, like the blood in our veins that runs red, green, black, white, yellow, and blue. Freedom to be, freedom to do, freedom to love, freedom to move, freedom to continue our story. Ladies and gentlemen, are we together? These songs are I hope. the wind of change seeping across the African continent. I hope. Let's sing, let's sing. The wind of change seeping across the African continent. The wind of change oh, sweeping across the African continent Over the heavens in the ah. Oh yeah, Africa Oh yeah, ooh Amanda, oh wait to Aluta, continue Leave Africa Yeah, the wind of change The wind of change to stand closer, come stand with me, so that we can receive the Namibian people as a nation. I thank you so much. I'm looking forward to having you here. Thank you. 
The day was August 26 in the year 1966. From trenches of land afar roared the sound of freedom war. They called you terrorists, but you were our infantrys. Treasure your walk in the face of adversity in search of people's victory. You walked in the footsteps of our founding father, the nation's great battle crafter. He never wavered for the struggle he forever labored. You waged a battle like slaves, and some lived to tell the tales. Tales of tragedy, tales of victory. Your blood lives in our memories. Your blood has shaped our destiny. You fought a struggle for our gain, a battle never waged in pain. Sleep, fallen heroes, sleep. Let your blood flow and sink deep, in which is immersed our new history. Your blood is the signature of this new victory. Arise, new heroes, arise. Wage a second battle against strife. Set the quest for a new history and march towards new victories. Awake, new heroes, awake. Do not ever procrastinate. Always alert to new enemies, for they are full of treacheries. Awake to a gunfire of new ideas, shooting towards great ideals. Awake to a new destiny. Awake a great nation. I thank you. Oh, man. 
But today, all the roads are leading to Mariental Hardab region. This region produces grapes. Those who like sweet things, you are welcome. It is also produced maize in the middle of the desert because it had the Hardab Dam. How do you introduce somebody who is so known by everybody? Because you elected him, you have seen him, you have seen the forces he has, not to terrorize you, but to defend the territory of Namibia. I'm happy equally to be in this region of beautiful people, and I know what I'm talking about when I say that. <laughs> Nobody got the joke. But my duty is not to give a speech at all. Look, all the things that have been done here, the army or the defense forces have done a tremendous job. None of the parachute, parachuta, fell down. This is the land of the brave. Contrasting, but the land of the brave. In everything we do, we should show our bravery. You have seen how the president was marching together with soldiers. Uh, it's not only now. He's a graduate of the Haini Tobias Hainieko Military Academy. You don't even know where it is. It, it was the center for training the best of the fighters of the plan. So I am introducing to somebody who knows Somebody with many ideas, always building houses for everybody to come in, always not wanting anybody to feel left out. That's why he was clapping hands when the youth took over to show the oneness of this nation and to show their energy and their determination to remain united and to not to be divided by anybody. On the basis of tribe, on the basis of region, on the basis of color, on the basis of religion, no. One Namibia, forever one nation. Dr. Hage Gottfried Geingob, is a disciplined dis disciple of Dr. Sem Noyoma and a worthy follower of Dr. Hifikepunye Pohamba. Without too much talking, you know you want I know you want to, to listen what he has to say to you. Right on our Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, please rise. Let us all now follow the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister in inviting His Excellency Comrade Dr. Hage Gottfried Geingob to the podium. To the podium, sir. That we are today remembering and also those Namibians who left us during these last three difficult years and so on. So in honor, in recognition of all those comrades Namibians who left us, but in particular this day being a special day for those who sacrificed their lives so that we can stand today and talk and laugh and joke as free people. Attention!
You may be seated. Thank you. Sam Monica Kengos, Governor of the Hadrab Region, Honorable Fighting Reverend Solomon April, other regional governors present, Honorable Regional and Local Authority Councillors, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished service chiefs, esteemed veterans of the liberation struggle, esteemed religious, traditional, and community leaders, invited guests, members of the media, fellow Namibians. Nobody chooses the destiny of war, but when faced with no choice but to fight for freedom, a true soldier never flees from the fate of conflict. When the gallant sons and daughters of our motherland realize that Namibians would have to become their own liberators, they set a date with struggle, and they set a date with faith. Accepting that there is no easy road to freedom, they engage in a long and bitter conflict to free themselves and their compatriots from the brutal chains of apartheid colonialism. Today, we have gathered here in Mariental, the heart of the heart of region, to remember and pay tribute to those men and women who engage in great feats of heroism and sacrifice. As we are commemorating our heroes and heroines in this historic town of Mariental, we remember our departed legendary leaders who hail from the great Hartab and Karas regions, such as the late Reverend Captain Hendrik Wetboy, traditionally known as Concept, the great grandson of the literary, le legendary Hendrik Wetboy, the early resistance leader who valiantly fought against German colonialism. Late Reverend Wetboy was also another senior member of the Swapo Party leadership before independence and the first deputy prime minister in independent Namibia. He, without wavering, stood firm until the end as a freedom fighter and a loyal patriotic nationalist and a loyal member of the Swapo Party. There are many contemporary great sons and daughters from the South, such as the late Comrade Willem Kanyore, Reverend Marcus Cooper, Comrade Ida Jimmy, Steve Chuel Stefanus, and others whose stellar legacy of heroism we celebrate today. We thank them for having never shied away from facing the enemy, for having fought to the very end, and for having never wavered on the path towards the total liberation of the Republic of Namibia. Therefore, it is befitting for the Namibian government to have brought the August 26 Heroes Day celebrations to the hard up region which is a historical beacon of resistance against colonialism. And in so doing, ensure that the socio-economic benefits of hosting the event 
is spread across the country. All the hotels are booked, we are told. You can't find place. These people came to Mariental to join you, but they are also going to spend money. The hotels are booked, restaurants are going to be full after this, so please don't complain. Fellow Namibians, Namibia has a history filled with tragedy, struggle, and triumph. The tragedy was colonialism, and from the day Germany colonized Namibia in 1884, our people were sub subject to the brutality of imperialistic subjugation. The barbaric treatment of the indigenous people of this country culminated in one of the greatest tragedies in our history, the Herero and Nama genocide of 1904 to 1908. Despite various uprisings by current Namibian anti-colonial luminaries, the Namibian people continued to dwell under the yoke of colonialism. And after German defeat in World War I, our people were transferred from one system of brutality to another when apartheid South Africa commenced its illegal administration in Namibia in 1915. During this time, apartheid South Africa introduced its dehumanizing brutal official policy of apartheid, according to which all black Namibians were denied basic human rights and freedom, speech, freedom of speech, association, development, and proper education. Namibians were used as cheap labor and paid poultry wages. They were considered as second-class citizens in their own land of birth and denied the right to reside wherever they wanted, the right to marry whomever they wanted, the right to choose the profession they wanted, and finally, forced to address the white settlers and their kith and kin as Hruot Bas, Mrs. Klein Bas, and Klein Mrs. The effect of this dehumanizing policy of apartheid is still visible until today in a form of widespread abject poverty among our people that the Namibian government is addressing unceasingly. This suffering continued for over half a century under the apartheid regime before reaching a turning point, before reaching a turning point on this day. But not this year. On this day, August 26, 1966. For as the revolutionary African leader, Kamel Abdel Nasser, once said, quote unquote, what was taken by force can only be restored by force. Indeed, on this day, 56 years ago, brave young Namibians decided that no longer shall the Namibian people stand back and suffer under brutality of the Boers. They decided that what was taken from them by force will be returned by force. Thus, when a small group of fighters from the People's Liberation Army of Namibia were attacked by South African soldiers, they engaged them in a battle, marking the beginning of national armed struggle for independence of Namibia. By this point, Namibians had decided that independence was the only option by any means necessary. This struggle was not easy. It was long and bitter, as one of the other heroes said, that is, Herman Jadwevo. It took its heavy toll 
on the mind, body, and soul of thousands of Namibian freedom fighters and the population at large. It took unimaginable acts of courage and sacrifice. There were many battles, many casualties, and many setbacks, but ultimately, through blood, sweat, and tears, against all odds, facing the most brutal conventional army on the continent, the will of the Namibian people eventually prevailed. Many rivers of blood were crossed, culminating in the legendary battle of Quito Guanaval, where with the assistance of the Cuban internationalist forces and our brave Angolan and Swapo forces, the conclusive defeat was given to South Africans. It's because of Quito Guanaval that the South Africans were forced to go back to the negotiating table and eventually here, here we are, independent. This agreement included the commencement of the United Nations supervised and controlled elections as stipulated under UN Resolution 435. Following the successful conclusion of these elections, Namibia was able to usher in the dawn of independence on March 21st, 1990. Fellow Namibians, our independence and subsequent liberty, unity, and justice is not cheap. Therefore, it should not be taken for granted. The democracy we are enjoying today was secured at a high cost. It was paid for in blood, the blood of fearless compatriots who left an indelible mark on the sovereign soil of our nation. It is for this reason that we say that their blood waters our freedom. It is not a catchphrase or slogan, but a poignant reminder that the freedom we enjoy today came at the expense of thousands of lives. Although we can stand proudly here today as a sovereign and independent nation, let us remember that if history and current international events have taught us one thing, it is that national sovereignty is not guaranteed. As I often say, and as I often warn, it is easy to destroy, but not easy to build. People are angry, our people are disappointed, they are suffering, though so can be easily instigated and destroy what we have. But it will take time, if at all you are lucky to rebuild. Therefore I say, it's easy to destroy, but very difficult to rebuild. Peace is a wonderful gift, but it is a fragile one as well. Therefore, for us to maintain peace and unity in our independent Namibia, it requires each one of us to bury their hatches, banish their grudges, and don the garment of blue, green, red, white, and yellow, Namibian colors. There are the col the, these are the colors of our flag. These are the colors of our Namibian house. And these are the only colors that should matter to the free and liberated people of Namibia. Let us appreciate that Namibia's successful struggle for freedom was achieved through the holding of hands by like-minded patriots who understood the value of independence and cherished it above everything else. They originated from all 14 regions of this country, crossing the barriers of the apartheid in both tribal bandstands 
uniting as one people against oppression. These brave sons and daughters never surrendered or wavered. Today, let us invoke the indomitable spirit of these valiant heroes by committing to safeguard the freedoms for which they fought and died. Let us commit never to return to the mentality of homelands or bandustans. Let us realize that we are all one people, and as the great Osage of Kwame Grumas stated, quote unquote, the forces that unite us are intrinsic and greater than the superimposed influences that keep us apart. Thus, the best way we can honor our heroes and pay homage to their immense sacrifices for Namibia's freedom is to inculcate within our society an intrinsic forces that buttress our unity and to patch out the foreign superimposed influences that keep us apart. Due to the blood that was spilled, we can never return to tri tribal Bandustan's ideologies. Due to the lives that were lost, we can never again allow the spectre of apartheid to infiltrate our society. Due to the sacrifices made, we must relentlessly guard our sovereignty and independence. Fellow Namibians, over the past several years, this nation has faced many challenges. Independent intervening variables, such as the global commodity crisis, currency fluctuations, recurrent drought, which were amongst the worst in recent history, have all played a role in placing our economy under enormous pressure. Furthermore, at a time that, thi that things seem to be in the mend, we were visited by COVID-19, an unwelcome and devastating guest. These past two years, we have faced the reality of COVID-19 pandemic. We have lost numerous lives, young and old male and female. No one has been spared from a devastation. And as we stand here, I believe all of us know somebody, one person at least, whom we lost because of COVID. Among those whom we have lost to the pandemic are many veterans of liberation struggle. At this juncture, I wish to extend my deepest sympathies to the families of those who have died due to COVID. In the same vein, I salute the new age heroes and heroines who are our healthcare workers, first responders, uniformed services, and all Namibians who made sacrifices in assisting their fellow compatriots during the darkest period of our war against COVID. Because of you, although we are banned, we did not break. Today, thanks for your valiant efforts, we stand ready to recover and move on, hand in hand, towards our destiny of prosperity. Fellow Namibians, those who fought for independence of Namibia have laid a solid foundation of unity and sacrifice. The onus lies with us to continue the march where they left off, to fulfill the ideals which spared them to patriotic, patriotic actions. We must realize that it is only the Namibian people who can usher in the dawn of economic liberation. Today, we face economic challenges let us not despair and give in to a sense of hopelessness. More than ever, this is a time to redouble our efforts 
to tangibly tackle the challenges head on until we are able to free our nation from the grip of economic obstacles. The struggle for economic emancipation of Namibians requires new heroes and heroines, and this is a time for them to step forward to the challenge. Just as the liberation struggle was long and bitter, so the economic struggle will be, but victory is certain. Ultimately, we will determine whether we succeed or fail. And in honor of our, our fallen heroes, failure can never be an option. Therefore, as we commemorate Heroes Day, let us tap into the spirit of those who stood up against colonialism, their patriotism, their bravery, and unwavering determination, so that we redouble our efforts and continue to march towards building a Namibia that will stand strong, Namibia that will stand united, Namibia that will stand and, and live in peace, Namibia that we all can call our home. Let us dare to be brave. Let us dare to dream. Let us dare to ascend to greater heights. With this, I wish all Namibians a wonderful Heroes Day. Long live the memory of Namibian, Namibian heroes and heroines. Long live the Republic of Namibia. I thank you. Take a, 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 take a,
It is my honor and pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks at this auspicious occasion of the Heroes' Day's commemorations. It has been a beautiful day indeed that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in it. And we rejoice not only because of the Lord's grace that we can witness this day, but also because it was His grace that has carried and inspired generations of Namibians through the many years of incredibly bitter struggles, granting them the fortitude and courage to confront their oppressors and bring freedom to our land and our nation. It is the bravery and immeasurable sacrifices of our heroes and heroines that we are celebrating and honoring today as we converge in this region in which some of the most fierce anti-colonial resistance was put up and liberation struggle activities carried out by many brave Namibians, some of whom made the ultimate sacrifice of their precious lives. Therefore, on this day, we thank them whose blood waters our freedom and those equally brave heroes of Namibia who survived the brutal war for national liberation and indeed delivered freedom and independence to this land of our ancestors. We thank His Excellency Dr. Gainkop, our president, himself a veteran of our liberation struggle, for leading our National Heroes Day's commemorations and for his inspiring and instructive address. We also thank the vice president for that introduction of our president as keynote speaker for today. And we thank Madam Monica Geinkos for supporting His Excellency the President as First Lady. They say behind every successful man is a strong supportive woman. We can all feel the support of our First Lady to His Excellency in his official duties as our President. We thank the dynamic governor of Hardap region, the Honorable Reverend Solomon April, for that inspiring welcoming statement, and indeed for providing leadership as political head of the Hardap region, ensuring that today's event is successfully held in a manner that befits the honor of the heroes and heroines whom we are honoring and celebrating today. This event is also attended by members of the Diplomatic Corps. We thank them very much for joining us today. Some of them are representing countries that have stood by us through the difficult struggle years, rendering us all-round support. It is our honor and pleasure to have them at this event, such as the one of today. The residents of Marine Tal Town, 
and hard up region have extended to all of us their usual home hospitality since our arrival here. And they have turned out in their great numbers to attend this national event together with other Namibians. They therefore deserve our appreciations. Our commemorations were made lively by the performance of the various performance groups. I didn't know that even the police band can pull those moves. We extend our appreciations to them for that. The NDF has put up a display of the defense capability that inspires us that the sovereignty of our country, which came at the cost of sacrifices and bravery that we are celebrating today, is indeed assured. We thank them for that. It is befitting that we extend special appreciations to the veterans of our struggle who came from different parts to join these commemorations today. Your presence here make this event special indeed. Thank you for being here. Indeed, we thank all the veterans, past and living, for the immense sacrifices made for our freedom and independence. We are inspired by your bravery and sacrifices to safeguard our hard-won freedom and unity and to continue the struggle for economic independence. The preparatory committee has put in many hours of hard work to ensure that this event is a success. Appreciations go to them. Appreciations also go to all those who provided support towards this event. Many thanks also go to all those who took time to attend the event, including our leaders from all walks of life, as well as those who followed the proceedings from their respective places. Let us continue to be united and work together to build an inclusive, peaceful, and prosperous Namibia. Finally, but by no means the least, thank you to the Director of Proceedings for ably directing today's proceedings. Let's all enjoy what remains of this day. Those of us who have to travel long distances back to our homes, we are wished travel mercies. Thank you very much.